why did you end up axing the Zillow? Well, the market was slowing down. Okay. There wasn't much inventory. And we found that the leads that we were getting were not valid. We were getting really good leads. And then all of a sudden, uh, Zillow made a change. Flex with, program. Yes. And then after, if you didn't enroll into the Flex program, your leads kind of changed. <laughs> So what else am I looking at? Yeah, this is like, you have a very fashionable Instagram. Thank you. I like it. It's like, it's a good kind of like mix of everything. Right. You, photography is good. You got the investment properties. You're selling, yeah, a ton of expensive stuff. Manhasset again. Manhasset, is this Manhasset twice? Manhasset twice. Um, let's see, you were, you were a skier. I or, am a or, skier. Or a snowboarder. Yes. You like to travel and you obviously like barbecue because there's a Nashville. Did, no, actually, that was a girl's trip. It was like a 20, 72 hour girl's trip with is, all my friends. Is this you on the mechanical bull no, hunched over? No, oh my God, no. Oh, that's it your was friend? so, no, no, no. It was some random girl and it was so uh, funny. I couldn't, I had to post it. I was going to say, that's a drunken mechanical bull ride. <laughs> she it, was holding on for dear life. Is this your dog? Athena. Yes, I just got her. She just turned one in April. Is she a pit bull? She's a pit mix, yes. Oh, she is adorable. Thank you. She's got a thing for uh, Starbucks uh, chinos. Those Puppet little chinos. chinos. Yeah, we That's... went kayaking this weekend together. First time ever going kayaking with her and she jumped into the water and I freaked out and she was fine. And after that, she did not move what for the That was it, she's hour. like, all right. I'm done with this. <laughs> She's like, what is this? Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, what else do I see here? I see Old Westbury. Mm -hmm. I see Glen Cove. I see Plandome Manor. Yeah, you are selling some really expensive shit. More Glen Cove. Good for you. Old Westbury. Hold on. This is not Great Neck. Another Great Neck. You're definitely a foodie. I see some pizza being made here over at Peter's Pizzeria. Oh yeah, it's my friend's place down in Boca. You live a good life. I do. I feel like you live a really good life. I do live a good life. You can it's tell. important. Instagram is one of those things where you can really manipulate, but I feel like you can tell everything you need to know about a person from their Instagram. Yes. And you look like you're a very happy person that lives a very exciting, awesome life with her cute ass dog selling <laughs> multi-million dollar houses and jet setting around the world while eating the finest pizza the West the East Coast has to offer. You hit it on the nail. <laughs> Smithtown, yeah. All right, well, with that said, welcome. Thank you. The Millennial Realtor 11. Does the 11 have significance? So my birthday is 11-11. Okay. Wow. Yes. There's like a thing with 11-11, right? Like my best friend has this crazy thing about always calling it out. It means something significant, doesn't it? I think, I mean, people always say you make a wish. Angel numbers. Oh, angel numbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, actually I was in a meeting yesterday with somebody who had a tattooed across their wrist. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. So my birthday is 11-11. Uh, I played lacrosse in college and my number was 11. And I don't know, it's just a good number. It just, it just makes sense. Yeah, it does. I like it. So obviously you, I'm sure you sell all kinds of houses, right? But you seem to be gravitating towards the luxury sector. Yes. Which makes sense to me because it's like, it takes as much work, if not more work to do a smaller deal than it does to do a bigger deal. Right. So you might as well do a bigger deal, make more money. Right. Right. I agree. What is your average sale price? Uh, 1.5. That's your average sale price right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's some, that's the real deal. That's basically three $500,000 houses in a clip. Right. Wow. So was that a plan? Did you plan that? Were you like, I'm going to go for luxury? Cause a lot of people want to do luxury. Right. But they don't do luxury. Right. They don't get it. It's a very select few people that actually pull off the luxury thing. It's true. Well, my, I started out, I've had my life. So I've been in the industry for 11 years. I started out when I was playing lacrosse in college. Uh, I needed a job one day, day a week. So I was working at Daniel Gale Sotheby's as a weekend admin. Got it. Schooling was finished. I needed a part-time job. So the manager of my office sent out an email and I ended up working for two top producers in the Mahasset office. Nice. And I was their personal assistant got my license with them, and I got to learn the luxury market through my team. Cool. And uh, then we moved to, then one of the partners uh, moved to Compass, and then I came with her, and then we created a team there. Nice. So my principal agent, Dana, she's uh, been with me for, we've been together for five, almost six years. Wow, good for you. Yeah. Don't you miss college a little bit? Sometimes I do, yeah. How old are you? I'm 27. Okay, oh yeah, so you're like, you can remember college. I, I mean, I can remember college too. It's just, 
Do you remember being in college? Do you remember your friends saying to you, I can't wait to get a job and get out of college? Did that ever happen to you? Yeah, I guess. I guess they just said they would just want to get out of school and just live life. Yeah, but <laughs> Not why? even get a job. I feel like when you're in college, that's like the best. You have noon classes and Fridays off. Well, summers. I played lacrosse in college. Uh, and so in season, I was playing lacrosse six days a week. And then I was working on Sundays. And then off season, I was interning at DKNY uh, in HR. Uh, so I never had really... You're like, Days a, off. you're like a real go getter. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because like you based on that, it seems like you're you have a lot of energy and you want to be busy. Always busy. But you're very calm. <laughs> like I can't picture you getting mad. No, it's very hard for me to get yeah. mad. Yeah. When it gets there, it's probably scary <laughs> because it probably takes a lot to get there. So when you snap, it's probably like leave the state. Yeah. Not you, whoever you're I'm pretty. Yeah, at. I'm I'm very patient. Uh, I thank my mom for that. She has yeah. a lot of patience. But uh, yeah, I mean, life is too it's too short to be angry. I mean, you just kind of let it go. And if you don't, then yeah, it gets bad. Got it. I wish more, I wish more people thought that way. Where did you go to school? Uh, so I grew up in Glen Cove. Got it. I uh, went to Glen Cove all the way up to middle. And then I went to Holy Trinity in okay. Hicksville. Yeah. And I went to Farmingdale State College. And so I went to, so I went to, I've been to four colleges, three undergrad and one man and one graduate. Nice. I went to Farmingdale, but when I went to Farmingdale, it was only a two year school. When you yeah. went to Farmingdale, it was a four year school, right? right? Yeah, so I went there for a year. Then I went to Nassau. Then I graduated from Hofstra. Nice. So yeah, I I, uh, I bounced around. I loved Farmingdale. I uh, played lacrosse there. Helped found a sorority. Nice. And I was in the ski and snowboard club. So okay. I was very active. <laughs> you um, do you regret not going? Like the only, I don't have any regrets in life. But one thing I'm kind of like, eh, should I do it? But then like my life would have been different. Should I have went away to school? Sometimes I think about it because the partying aspect and the freedom that you have is a, a lot different than commuting. Mm -hmm. But I had, I was very fortunate enough to study abroad three times. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of Jesus. like- uh, yeah, You do live a great life. Where did you go? Can you study abroad three times? Yeah, you can. As wow. long as you have all the- I thought that was like a one shot deal. No. Wow, where did you study abroad? Uh, so I started off in Florence, Italy. Okay. I learned, I did photography and Renaissance art. Mm. And then I went to Barcelona, Spain, and I studied business management. Okay. And then my senior year, I went to Australia, uh, Western Australia in Perth. All right. So tell me, listen, when you say that, this is what comes to my mind, all right? And I'm a little whacked. I'll just, okay. I'll tell you from the beginning. Probably all of those three places, I see like, I see a movie. You're like tall, attractive. You are like American. You have your camera. You're in Spain and some hot Spanish guy <laughs> named Raul. Is that a Spanish name? Yeah. No? Just like wanders up to you with that accent and he's got his shirt unbuttoned down to his navel and he's tan. <laughs> and you have a you have a, 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 a you have a semester romance with him. Did yeah. that happen? Yeah. I mean Fuck now we're Raul, but yes! con. <laughs> you were thinking the same thing. <laughs> I was so specific. Come on. Just, kept adding. just think about that. Look at her, right? Just imagine her. How tall are you? Five nine? Five nine, yeah. Right? Prancing through the square, American, long hair. You know that, like, whatever his name, Rodrigo, is sitting there, right? <laughs> with his shirt unbuttoned, the hamburger meat hanging out, with the cross on. He's got a cigarette in his mouth, slick back hair, jet black, tan as hell, right? With a glass of wine, and he's got the accent, and that's it. Then they freaking have this amazing semester long romance. <laughs> Never in the square. Then it, wait, what was the first one? That was Florence. Italy. It, come on, Italian guys. Yes. Oh, they're actually, one of them actually flew back here and took me out on a thank, day in the city. Thank you. <laughs> right, Italy, then Spain, Australia. Yeah, I had an Australian. Yeah, they have a nice accents. Yeah, but they're, they're not that nice. No, the people aren't. Really they're that handsome nice. though. I I've been to Australia. Yeah, I've been to all. Wait, hold on. You went. I've been to Spain. I've been to Australia. And what was the last one? Oh, Italy. Been to Italy too, but it depends. We're in Italy. Florence. I was in Florence. Yeah. Yeah. Kentucky tour, 2025. Uh, when I was 25. That was nice. Amazing. Europe's amazing. Yeah, I love it. It's my favorite. I actually uh, accumulated a bunch of friends there, and I've been going since co before COVID. I was in Amsterdam like three times a year, uh, visiting you, one of my friends. You and speak different languages. I don't. Yeah. No, I have like a. Well, my parents never taught. Uh, so my mom's Greek and my okay. dad's Italian, but my mom's first language nice. is Greek. Okay. 
but my dad doesn't like Greek people, so he <laughs> so he de- didn't want us to go to Greek school until we learned a different language. Got and it. my mom only wanted us to learn Greek, so we didn't learn anything. And your, your father's married to a Greek woman, but he hates Greeks. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. How does that happen? He said that she's different. <laughs> First of all, I've never heard anything bad about like Greek people. Like they're what, not bad. Yeah, what can they say? Like, I, don't I don't know. Get, I don't understand. He just does doesn't like them. Wow. But he married one. So. Yeah, and I feel like I mean, Greek. So I'm like I'm half Italian. So I feel like Italians and Greeks are kind of the same. Yeah, I guess they have like similar look. We we all like right. food. Right. Greeks, it's more Mediterranean. There's more fish, where the Italians would do more pasta. Right. But we're, we're more more alike than we are different. Yeah. I don't know. He's a strange man. I, don't know. I just see like you're, funny I, I just feel like you're a debutante who lives on the Upper East Side. I don't know why. Who speaks six languages? <laughs> I wish I could speak six languages. I've tried learning Spanish. Uh, it just doesn't click. No? No. I went to a private school uh, when I was studying abroad in, Bar- in um, Barcelona. I went to a private business school there okay. and there was only five Americans okay. and everyone wanted to learn English and no one wanted to teach me Spanish. And I tried learning and they're like, Michelle, just speak English, please. All right. <laughs> so it well, just doesn't, doesn't click. Well, languages might not be your knack, but obviously selling $1.5 million houses is your knack. So, I mean, we got a little bit of an inkling as to like how you went about doing it, meaning you had amazing mentors, right? which like, I guess, tell everybody how, so you were, can we say you're on a team or we're on a team? I am on a team. You are on a team, okay. So let's talk about the team thing for a minute there. How okay. important do you feel is it is the team thing? Do you like the teams? Do you think teams are forever? Like talk about teams in general. I think they're great um, because you are brainstorming with not just one person, but with a group of people. We have four people total. We have the princ- my principal agent, Dana, and then we have Justin and Vanessa and myself. Got so it. it's four of us total. And it's good because you're, I mean, it really depends on your team and how you function. And if it's, if the structure is there, if you have no structure, then a team always can go south. But we have pretty good structure and we help each other out. And I find, feel like you in real estate, when you're a seasoned agent working seven days a week, you can't do it all yourself. No. So being able to have a team to help you or collaborate together makes it a lot easier. So as a busy agent, right? Cause top 20 and 40, you're obviously doing a bunch of deals. What are, do you feel are the things that you need other agents to, that you need to lean on other agents for during that process? Because you're so busy. Um, I mean, I kind of like to handle everything myself, but usually like paperwork or, um, like showing sometimes if there's like, if I have a listing presentation and I have some showings, like I'll need help with showings a lot. So showings are definitely important, but paperwork too is also important because it takes a lot of time out of your day to do your paperwork. No, that makes sense. I think like, again, when you're a realtor, you're running your own business. Right. So some people think about it that way. Some people don't. But it's like, you know, your highest and best use is to be out there selling, right. bringing in deals. But there's a lot of like ancillary other time consuming stuff that like people don't realize that you have to do that takes away from that. Right. So it's a matter of like, how do you efficiently handle those things without it taking up too much of your time? Well, like time block. Yeah, you are super organized, aren't you? <laughs> Time blocking is definitely really important. Time blocking is the, is the best thing in the world. I just realized this like six months ago, and I'm not amazing with it, but I'm trying, but it really has made a big impact. It does. I mean, I'm not st- fully structured. It. I fall off of it sometimes, but I do set my schedule where I can time block my days where I'm like, okay, I'll wake up. I have to submit, do this paperwork. I have to send out this marketing, and then I'll do these calls and then we'll schedule it around my showings or an appointment. So how much prospecting do you do? Um, not, I mean, I do a lot, I get a lot of my business through open houses okay. and I, we used to have Zillow, which I used to get a lot of my leads through Zillow and we stopped the Zillow and now I've been focusing more on like mm-hmm. o- open house, uh, attendees, yep. capturing them and also going back to old, um, open houses yeah. that I've had and calling, making phone calls, like make at least five to 10 calls a day to try and reconnect with those uh, prospects to see if they're still on the market. 
Why didn't you like, why did you end up axing the Zillow? Well, it's, well, the market was slowing down. Okay. There wasn't much inventory and we found that the leads that we were getting were not valid. Um, yeah. We were getting really good leads and then all of a sudden uh, Zillow made a change. Flex with, program. Yes. And then after, if you didn't enroll into the flex program, then your your leads kind of changed. Yeah. And and then after that, there was no nothing in the in Mahasset. I mean, the market, the inventory is so low that it was not worth the money to. So pursue. what do you what do you? That's actually a very interesting point that we have, that I haven't talked about. For a caveat, so every year the top two hundred and forty, a you guys are the most fun year yet, hands down. B Every year, there's kind of like a theme of like where the deals come from. Right. I don't know if it happened has to do with just what's going on in the market at that particular right. time or whatever. But this year, the common theme is Zillow. Yeah. Everybody's like, yo, I got 11 out of 12 deals out of Zillow, Zillow, Zillow. Every, literally everybody that has walked in this door, sat down in that chair, has said Zillow. Yeah. Which is really interesting because when you talk to some people, Zillow is like the antichrist. Right. Where, yeah, I mean, I like Zillow. I think it's great. Listen, anything that gets the phone to ring that turns right. into money for me, I think is awesome. Right. Plus, it's just, if you're a newer agent, it, it'll jumpstart you. Right. Meeting people, talking, getting experience, whatever. Definitely. So I think it's it's awesome. Yeah. But like you said, your market's very unique because you're talking about really big dollars. Right. But not a lot of inventory. Right. What do you do, what do you do when you get to a point in the market like this when there's no inventory? Well, what I've been doing is, because mainly people who are coming to Mahasset are looking either Mahasset, uh, Great Neck, Roslyn, Herrick School District, those four. And they're all really low on inventory. And the houses that do come on that are priced right, there's multiple bidding wars. There's, mm -hmm. you either have to waive your mortgage contingency, you have to be all cash. You have to waive everything in order for you to really get the house. Oh, it's like that? It's like that. The houses are going over 100K. It's, I just had a deal where uh, a house in Mahasset, my buyers went over 150K. And did they get it? No, they got it okay. because they said that if there's any open COs and violations, they're okay with it. And that's the only way they got the house. And that is, and we're talking about North Hempstead, right? With, yeah. Town of North Hempstead. Town of North Town Hempstead. Town of North Hempstead is the worst place. No, sorry. It's the second worst place. And I'm not supposed to do this because apparently when I talk about the towns, people see it. And they send it to people in the towns. And then when we're doing work there, they yell and get pissed and like oh. stole my shit because they like stop talking shit about our town. Oh my God. Town North Hempstead used to be the worst. You guys aren't the worst anymore. You know who's the worst? Brookhaven. Fucking A, Brookhaven. Brookhaven is the worst. If Brookhaven, if you're listening to this, you're the fucking worst. I'm sorry, but you're the worst. A year. It takes a year. A, a year, year to get a permit. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. What would you do as a realtor when you're trying to sell a house and then they say, you need a year to get a permit? Uh, That's when not so calm Michelle comes out. <laughs> I don't know what I would do. I mean, I don't know. I guess you would try and brainstorm and figure out a way if you can't. Maybe if you have a buyer that's willing to accept it and wait with the process. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. It's horrible. I would kind of figure it out it's the worst when thing that ever. time comes. <laughs> it's the worst thing ever, especially when you have money online and right. you're like holding it and carrying yeah. it every single month. Thank you for letting me vent. Of course. But we're back to you. Okay. All right. So I want to delve into like, this is what, this is what everybody wants to know. And I ask every single top 20 under 40 agent the same thing, right? Okay. Because this is like the one big, big point. Everybody wants to be you. You know that. If they're in real estate for less than five years. They're under 40. They have a shot. They can be top 20 under 40. Yeah. How do, they, how do you do it? They want to know. They're like, where are the leads coming from? How do I get it done? Because really to be top 20 under 40, you probably have to do at least 10 to 15 deals in a year of like substance, right? if not more. So that's a lot of deals for like someone that's been in the business for like two years right. or three years or whatever. Yeah. So tell them, tell them, look at them right there and tell them how you did it. Well, uh, being on, I've learned the back end first, uh, starting out in real estate. Uh, so I learned all the programs, MLS, showing time, everything you need to know back end. That's what I started with. And when I got my license, I already knew all that stuff. So it was pretty easy for me to kind of jump in. Um, but being on a team, having the support uh, that really has helped me because if I got stuck 
in a situation or I didn't know something, I would always lean on to my principal agents and she would help me help guide me through it, which was really important. But working every day, seven days a week, all day, all night, always answering my phone, always being accommodating, accommodating buyers and sellers is definitely really important. And um, following up, following up is- Following up is- is so it. important. We badger people to death. That's like how we get deals. Yeah. We basically, I basically annoy people so they say, if I sell you this house, will you stop calling me? Is basically what happens. Yeah. They call or they email or however the leads right. come in, right? Texting, you name it. Texting, by the way, you should. Texting is a game changer. It is. But I've also been told that you need to just get on the phone. I've lost a buyer because I've whatever the deal ended up going south another buyer came in mm -hmm. it was a, like a three million dollar house they went for asking price did the inspection did everything within three days contracts were getting ready we we're about to sign them and the agent goes mia doesn't answer from two o'clock until the rest of the evening and oh, so i get man. a call at 11 30 at night saying that she already had another contract out and that they already signed and then they're no longer using us. Well, she's, she's an asshole. Did they give you back your home inspection money? Uh, well, yes, we told them you can't, this is not right. You need yeah. to be fair and give this buyer a, their money back for the inspection because they were ready to sign and you went MIA. So she did and okay. they sent it by mail. And then my buyers got really upset about it, about the whole situation. And the money took, cause it was a holiday weekend as well. So there was that one day. So the money didn't come for a week. They thought we were, they thought I was lying about the money. I told them to like, just give it one more day. If not, I will chuck up the money and give it to them. And the money came the next day. We went to go hand deliver it to them. They were like, thank you. And I gave them like two weeks, three weeks, called them, no answer. And I was like, okay, maybe they need some time sent them a message, sent them more listings, no answer. And I just kept texting, which what I should have done was at that point, picked up the phone yes. again and called them. So when I, so to clarify my thing on the texting, texting as like, texting with a text platform right. at scale to get them on the phone. Right. Is, is, is working very well for lead gen. Yeah. But like, I'm with you, cause I'm old. Right. So we, we in my generation, we talk to people on the phone. Your generation, you don't talk. It's very, it's, so I have to say, it's definitely a little bit hard for me, cause I'm so used to the texting that when it comes yep. to phone calls, it, I kind of cringe inside a little. <laughs> I fucking have to I'm talk like, to this yeah, person. I'm like prepping myself, I'm like, okay. But it's so important, especially- It really is. Especially most people, I'll generalize, most people that are buying a $3 million house aren't like 27. Right. So those people are used to talking on the phone. Yeah. So you like, you have to do it. It's just a right. another level of them kind of, of compliance. Right. And once you get on the phone, it's very, it's very easy to yeah. just, it's just making the call. <laughs> That's so interesting though. Do you guys feel that? Do you have like, do you have phone anxiety as a result of just like, that's not how you communicate with the world? Huh? Like you would rather text. Same? Yeah. Wow. So interesting. I mean, that's, that's the different generations. Yeah. But yeah, the talking is, I, I mean, as people get older and texting is the norm, maybe that's it. But I don't think there's any sacrifice. There's, you, you, the call is really what makes sense. There's no substitute it for it. But the texting at scale with through some kind of te text platform, right. when you're sending out 20, 30, 40, 50,000 plus messages a month, that works. Yeah. That stuff, that stuff's really, really been working. More so than the cold calls, because I mean, how many spam calls do you get a day? A lot. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It is. So like, like anything in marketing, something works and then we beat it to death and then it right. stops working. You gotta right. find the next thing. Consider the texting thing. Yeah, I will. If anything good came from this podcast, consider the texting thing. Okay. You can talk about that after, but it's okay. really, it's very, very good. So. To go back to the team thing, mm -hmm. right? What do you think the like the one, two, or three? Mo I don't want to ping it to a number, but like, what are the most valuable things that you learned from the team in the early days? Um, well, I what from the early days, like when you first got into it, you got your license. Now you're on the team, right? Right. 
being on a team is kind of like having a mentor. Actually, it is directly like having right. a mentor. And the best thing about mentorship is you essentially you're you're saving time. Mm -hmm. So something that so if you're paying for a mentor, like let's say you have a coach or something, or you're giving up more of a split because you're on a team, right. you're doing it because you're compressing time. So you can instead of taking five years to learn something, you'll learn it off their experience in a year and a half. Right. So what do you think are the most important things that you got out of out of the team? Uh, seeing how they react to their to their clients, mm -hmm. um, listening into a conversation with them, especially if it's a hard conversation. If say they lost a deal or the they got an offer and they need to really take the offer, whatever the situation may be, an uncomfortable phone call. I've learned from listening to them how to really manage it and what the right way to do. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, kind of shadowing them and how they work every day. That was really important. It's good kind of structure my day. Like, okay, how can I do this in a way that's efficient? And yeah. how do you make more money? And I kind of shadowed my my mentors, my team agents, and kind of see, see how they did it. So it was pretty good. Do you ever see yourself doing anything other than real estate? Um, I think about that sometimes. Uh, but I don't know. Right now, I'm very happy where I am. But I don't. I kind of just go with the flow. If something falls into my lap, then maybe I'll take it up. But as of right now, I'm not going anywhere. No, it makes sense. Listen, real estate is like a thing. Either, either it 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 bites you, and you're just you're all in and addicted to it, and you're like a seven day a week person. Yeah. Or it's just it's not for you. I love it. I mean, it's. I'm so happy I got into it. Um, originally, I was going to be in, um, I wanted to do HR okay. in corporate. I wanted the corporate setting. I wanted to work in fashion, in, but on the business side. And I was like, human resources is it. I want to do that. I love talking to people. I love interacting. And I was in this cubicle and I'm like sending out the same template to these new hires. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> and I'm like, this is awful. I'm getting so much weight I'm sitting here eating my snacks <laughs> and I'm copying and pasting this same template for this new hire. And I'm like, this isn't for me. And um, when I got into the real estate, I was working one day a week when I was playing lacrosse. I'm getting so much weight eating my snacks. <laughs> I can't wait for you to be there. I just want to ask you what your snack of choice is. Um, well, my snack of choice would usually be like dry mangoes or that's like not good. Nobody gets fat eating mango or pretzels with peanut butter. Uh, yeah, or yeah, those yeah, yeah. are the like, chocolate cover ones with the peanut butter in the middle. No yeah. chocolate. Oh, really? No, just the the peanut butter. Right? Uh, just the, uh, everything's better with peanut butter. Let I, me tell you something. That shit's got a lot of calories. They in do. It. I didn't realize it until I changed my diet like a month ago. Right. Peanut butter. It's like heaven in your mouth, but it will your it will grow your ass fast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Peanut butter, a lot of calories. But yeah. it tastes amazing. Did you try that new TikTok thing with the berries in the, um, you, you have TikTok? No. No. I could, I took TikTok. I had TikTok and I caught myself on TikTok for four hours straight. And I was like, this is really bad for you me. You were like mainline Delete. TikTok. <laughs> I know, but it's so good. I know, but it's dangerous. I'm like. You're right. No, you have to be able to control it. I myself is, aren't good at controlling I'm like anything. I'm sucked into it. I'm like, okay, what's next? Oh it's my like, God, what time is it? <laughs> it's just like dopamine hit, dopamine hit, yeah, dopamine hit. It's really, really good. So TikTok has this new dessert. Do you like blueberries? Yes. What's your favorite fruit? Um, what's your favorite berry? I would have to say a raspberry. Okay, so check this out. You take the raspberries. Okay. You wash them. You mm -hmm. strain them. You put them in a bowl. You get vanilla Greek yogurt. Okay. Mix it in. Okay. Mix it up so it's evenly coated. You put some honey in there. Not too much, but you put honey in there. Okay. Now, you take a metal tray with wax paper. You guys done this yet? And you freeze it. Fucking awesome. So you take the do you take like doll stuff and make them to like cookies. Right. And you freeze it. Okay. After they freeze, I like to put a little peanut butter on top of it and then freeze it again. Then you melt like milk chocolate or dark chocolate. You dip them in. You put them back in the freezer. Wait until they're cold, and then it's like a healthy fruit ice cream ice cream bar. I've seen that on Instagram. Fucking delicious. Yeah. I have a lot of those saved. <laughs> delicious. Yeah, and they're easy, right? Very easy. That's good. Yes. So that's my that's my new that's my. I'm new gonna addiction. have to try it. That's my new addiction. All right. Try them with blueberries. Try them with raspberries. Try them with blackberries. Try them with strawberries. Just try them. So I appreciate you coming down. You were awesome. Thank I had a great you. time. I had a great time as well. It's been an hour already. Really? It flies that fast. Wow. It has been 47 minutes. Mm. 
So if anybody is looking to sell anything, but especially luxury. Yes. How do they get a hold of you? Where can they find you? Mm, they can call me. <laughs> yes. Or text. Or text me. Um, and do I get my number? Yeah. You, okay. This is this is your show. <laughs> 516-399-9474. Or you can follow me on Instagram at the Millennial Realtor 11. Boom. And obviously I'm the handsome home buyer. You have a house that smells like Cappy, dated from the 1960s. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Old, new, falling down, luxurious, not so luxurious. I want to buy it. 516-777. Sold. And obviously we got to give a shout out to Sal Rizzolo because we love him. And if you don't know him, you should know him. Cardinal Financial. This is Bridget calling. Let's see if somebody is in fact dead or alive. That's a wrap.